रिएक्टिविटी इन केमिस्ट्री मेनली इन ऑर्गेनिक एंड ऑर्गेनिक वी हैव टू टाइप्स ऑफ क्वेश्चन डिस्टिंक्टली वन इज थियरिटिकल क्वेश्चन द अदर वन और रिएक्शन वो डू मीन विथ थियरिटिकल क्वेश्चन फॉर इंस्टेंस इन अवर अर्लियर क्लासेस वी हैव डिस्कस्ड SO2, so many things about SO2 we discussed. We, to start with, the oxidation state sulfur plus four, and the structure double bond O, double bond O. It has two sigma bonds and two pi bonds, and sulfur has a lone pair, two bond pair and one lone pair. Therefore, it has a bent structure. The geometry. the sigma bonds the pi bonds lone pair oxidation state and uh, one of the pi bonds is indeed a d pi p pi bond a pi bond in which d orbital of sulfur is involved and since you have a lone pair wherever there is a lone pair the molecule is said to be polar except of course xcf2 and xcf4 if you have a lone pair the molecule is said to be polar so these are all theoretical aspects and one more this sulfur dioxide is diamagnetic how can we know you know the total number of electrons is odd number diamagnetic so we discuss the structure the shape the hybridization whether it is polar or not the number of d pi p pi bonds and the hybridization 6 plus 0 by 2 which is 3 sp2 so the formula for hybridization the rule for polarity the number of d pi p pi bonds the number of lone pairs the structure the oxidation state the magnetic nature and uh, you also know that sulfur dioxide is an acidic oxide how can you know that acidic acidic because it's a non metal oxide and uh, it's an anhydride of h2so3 when you remove water from an acid called sulfurous acid you get so2 these are mostly the theoretical aspects it's all good but how does so2 react with uh, k2cr2o7 the big question in fact many of you many of you might even think that inorganic means reactions or rather chemistry means reactions how a substance reacts with the other and uh, you are not wrong when you consider things like that so we indeed spent a lot of time in theoretical aspects but only these theoretical aspects only will decide the reactivity so we have to learn reactions not in isolation not one reaction after the other which will become our task very difficult very difficult like uh, there are so many reactions how can we remember all those things we can only know the mentality of an element mentality of a compound why compounds and elements react the way they do so so2 you have sulfur in its plus 4 oxidation state and you already know there is a lone pair a lone pair which will uh, cause uh, repulsion to the bond pairs therefore the mentality of so2 is more to use those two electrons also so we study the reacting mentality which is called reactivity and that's how only we go about the task of reactions of organic and in inorganic basically right so i discuss the reactivity now this will definitely include so many things of which we have already learned see i roughly will teach you 20 points to summarize most of the reactions first point this is less stable given a chance what do you mean by given a chance given a chance less stable given a chance that is slight heating given a chance that is slight heating 
because I insist on this point slight heating because when you heat very strongly you don't know what might happen anything may happen so it's, it should be a natural process when, when you're heating slightly something takes place in a natural way wants to become more stable wants to become more stable less stable given a chance wants to become more stable so this is the basic idea of all reactions anything happens for betterment only if somebody does something he definitely does that for his betterment so atoms and molecules ions they also behave in that direction only first point all nitrogen atoms in fact it would have been enough if I have simply written nitrogen in brackets but my emphasis is an atom all nitrogen atoms all nitrogen atoms want to become N2 the nitrogen molecule you might ask me why because the N2 molecule contains a triple bond and it's a very strong bond so the reason the triple bond is very strong and you can say nitrogen is almost an inert gas it doesn't react evidence what is evidence for what I am saying you have 79 percent roughly nitrogen in air and uh, roughly 20 percent oxygen if nitrogen starts reacting with oxygen what would have happened all the nitrogen and oxygen would have combined to give nitric oxide we wouldn't have got a single molecule of oxygen for breathing you know if nitrogen starts reacting with oxygen all oxygen would have been consumed by nitrogen itself and the environment would must have been full of uh, N2 and nitric oxide rather than oxygen but this reaction takes place only at a, a temperature of 3000 degrees centigrade or 3000 volts a high temperature okay 3000 volts very high voltage only when lightnings occur nitrogen combines with oxygen only with the help of high voltage produced by lightnings it happens only in the upper environment I, I sincerely believe you won't find a single molecule of NO in this room the reason you have nitrogen you have oxygen but you don't have that kind of voltage for them to combine so all nitrogens want to become N2 reason being N triple bond N being very very strong can't be broken easily remember nitrogen can be said to be a less reactive gas I can't say a non-reactive gas but definitely it is a less reactive gas more or less a noble gas uh, it's like a, um, noble gases helium neon which do not easily combine nitrogen also doesn't combine easily and second point all oxygen atoms all oxygen atoms want to become H2O once again what is the reason here the OH bond is the second strongest bond second strongest of course covalent bond we can never compare the strengths of ionic bonds which are electrostatic attractions which depend on so many factors so the less said about the stability of ionic compounds the better so so we focus on second strongest almost covalent bond I may be over generalizing but that is enough for you at your love like FH bond is the strongest bond HF bond is the strongest bond strongest covalent bond this is the second strongest bond in fact you might have remembered O bond is the second weakest bond when it comes to reactivity o, o bond is the second weakest bond because of the presence of too many lone pairs you have too many lone pairs there and FF bond by the same yard stick is the strongest bond FF FF this is strongest bond and this is the weakest bond because of three lone pairs here and two lone pairs two two four lone pairs too much of repulsion so HF oh so OH bond is very 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 strong and when you heat water also at best it vaporizes you get H2O in gaseous state but definitely it's not very easy to get hydrogen and oxygen atoms out of that the molecules as such 
may oh, vaporize go to gas state but still remain h2o the bonds are not broken however high heating you do 400 500 even 600 degrees also water doesn't break i mean the bonds in water do not break that's the reason 75% of earth is covered with water if water decides not to be stable what would have happened all water would have broken into hydrogen and oxygen molecules and we wouldn't have got a single molecule of water to drink so thank god for that n2 is highly stable it doesn't want to react with oxygen it, that's why we get oxygen for breathing h2o is very stable that's why we get water for life right all oxygen atoms want to become h2o and in our earlier classes we have seen a host of molecules which contain a weak bond h2o2 the oxygen oxygen single bond once again you have a peroxy bond which is weak h2o2 wants to become h2o why the same reason h2o is highly stable an oxygen oxygen single bond is very 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 weak peroxy bond that's why we indeed look at uh, substances containing that peroxy linkage we were particular about uh, finding whether a molecule has a peroxy bond or not now even ozone become wants to become o2 ozone you in fact have a coordinated bond and of course the resonates it's not always a double bond it's not always a single bond the double bond will shift there and the two bond will be shifting so it's like a 1.5 bond 1.1 and a half bond so once again oxygen oxygen single bond is also once again weak therefore ozone wants to become o2 wants to become this is important word here they they want to become they do anything with the intention of uh, getting themselves converted into so nobody is forcing them to become nobody is forcing h2o to become h2o it itself wants to become h2o o wants to become h2o and it gladly gives you oxygen you know if you want it can gladly give you an oxygen atom a substance that can give an oxygen atom who could that be an oxidizing agent who else h2o2 happily gives you an oxygen doesn't object you need not even ask h2o2 it just gives oxygen that's way next cao cl2 the so called bleaching powder wants to become ca cl2 look here it once again contains that uh, 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 weak bond ocl two lone pairs three lone pairs so cao this all this all these substances if you observe what is common with all these they all have an extra oxygen unnecessary uh, oxygen atom that is causing some kind of trouble had this oxygen not been there calcium chloride would have been a perfectly ionic molecule and uh, perhaps uh, the bonds would have been electrostatic strong because of the presence of this extra oxygen the molecule is facing some trouble and once again nes hclo hypochlorous acid hypochlo that also contains ocl bond same trouble wants to become hcl naclo in a natural way wants to become nacl when you heat it strongly perhaps you may get nacl o3 or anything else i never talk about those reactions which involve a lot of heat because all those reactions are catalyzed by heat they are because of heat and uh, and they are because of some kind of uh, external force you are using so how can anyone predict what happens when you use a lot of uh, force that is unpredictable so we are predicting reactions where the process or where uh, the what do you call the progression is natural never ask me about unnatural reactions i am not a case for that perhaps you may have to memorize that's why people will tell you you have to memorize a lot in chemistry that is not true 75% of the reactions can be predicted in a natural manner of course there are uh, maybe 50 60 reactions where a lot of heat is involved and where the products are quite unpredictable suppose if i take a big glass object and uh, throw that from a seven story building what will happen to that who knows it may break into 100 pieces 1000 pieces so never go after such reactions it's like going after mirages mirages in a desert for example h3po3 heating to 450 degrees what will happen how can i know anything can happen 450 degrees is no it's no less temperature 
at this temperature anything will happen but thankfully uh, i think our ncrt has mentioned all the oxy acids of phosphorus in their intermediate oxidation state here phosphorus is in plus 3 state plus 3 whereas phosphorus can go as low as minus 3 and as high as plus 5 here it is in uh, plus 3 state so ncrt it is mentioned that whenever there is an oxy acid of phosphorus in intermediate oxidation state it will go to the least pH 3 and to the highest H 3 PO 4. Okay, that statement perhaps will help remember a few reactions, but they are I do not think they are of a uh, great significance. No doubt the statement is good, no doubt the statement is valid, but how that you cannot uh, generalize all such reactions. It is only with phosphorus once again. I cannot say the same with nitrogen. Suppose there is a molecule of nitrogen in intermediate oxidation state. I cannot predict its reactivity. Thank you.